astral projection is real cool. Yeah. Dreaming is real cool. Yeah. I had a, a brief phase in 2018 where, um, you know, I've lucid dreamt by accident a number of times in my life. Um, but I was just fascinated. I want to get a lucid dream book or I think I got multiple, but there's yeah. one called a uh, field, Gu- the lucid dreamers field guide, I think is what it's called. Mm. And I read that. And I mean, one just doing, just reading a book about it is part of the process because it, it occupies your conscious mind during the day with something like lucid dreaming. And then it gives you tips like anchors to, yeah. to start programming your unconscious and subconscious mind when it's dreaming to look for these things totally. that would signal to you. So I did, I got, I became someone who could lucid dream almost like on a nightly basis yeah. or at least rem- my dream recall because I started doing a dream journal yeah. just expanded insane. Like I went from being able to maybe remember like a sentence or two worth of details of the dream to multiple pages, paragraphs yeah. of detail. And I, I fell off and stopped doing it. But, um, Probably because it was like taking me a whole 30 minutes to an hour to write when I, as soon as I woke up. <laughs> That's good to do though. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I do feel like it brought some sort of like really psychological benefit to it where I just felt much more aligned and in tune with mm-hmm. myself and my reality. And it's weird because it's not, it doesn't really make logical sense. Yeah. But it's, it seems or to be, it? yeah, some sort of unconscious yeah. process going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I uh, realize I'm dreaming, I like to, like, when I'm in a dream, I like to fly. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah. I'll be like, oh, this is a dream. Oh, I could fly. Okay, let's go. Like, mm-hmm. Let's get out of here. Um, <laughs> yeah. I remember, I think my first time flying, it was in that bout of starting to lucid dream and having dream recall. Mm-hmm. But, like, I started, I was in a loft apartment I was living in, in the dream. And I wasn't living there at the time that I had the dream, but it was, like, one from a year or two prior. And, um, I just started like levitating yeah. in it. and then I went up with this and then I realized like, oh, I can like shoot up like, yes. and then I just yeah. you know, did that. Um, there was, uh, there was something else here too about what, what did you just say? It might've triggered the thought. Um, um when you realize you're dreaming f- or? the flying, yeah. realize, oh, tricks so like everyone knows the the looking at a time or a watch yeah. trick right you look it's a time it and then sense. you look away it's you not look a watch. again and <laughs> yeah and then you have like 10 fingers on yeah. one hand yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but one of my favorite tricks that i found the most effective was holding your nose oh interesting yeah. okay because if you hold your nose in a dream you can still breathe through your nose perfectly mm. yeah because uh, otherwise in real life you do it oh i can't breathe through my nose but yeah um, that was one of my favorite tricks. And then there was also something in that book that said when you're starting to like lose the dream or you're starting to lose your, at least your lucidity, yeah, something along the lines of that. I think yeah. it was mostly just like the dream was coming undone and it was yes. going to blackness. Yeah. One of the ways to stop that from happening is slowing down your breathing and like trying to enter a meditative state in the dream. Mm, that was yeah. also a strange. That's a good tip, actually. Yeah. I should think about that more. Can I tell you about a dream I had the other day? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, we're I, not no. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I probably had this dream just because I started picking up guitar again. My dad is a musician, so I was like, hey, um, can we learn this classical piece together? And then I had a dream uh, that I was a musician, and I had a, an acoustic guitar going on stage with two... Uh, saxophone players Mm. and then my dream came undone like you're saying when i just got up to go on stage but part of me was like thank god because i'm not a musician right but then the other part of me is like i wish i could have held on to it to see how this would have came out you know yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) have you ever had a dream that's like really banal you know of course we have these dreams that are you know super fascinating and out of the ordinary, like this wouldn't make sense happening in real life. But have you ever had a dream that totally could happen in real life? And it is almost totally normal except for like, just not even except for, but there's just one little detail that's significant in your waking life. Like let's say you were, you had a dream about having a phone call with an existing client where they told you a detail about a shoot, like, Oh, we need to move the shoot to this venue. Yeah. Otherwise the dream is completely normal. And then that just sits in your memory. And like two weeks later, you're talking to that client, like, are we still doing the, the venue switch? And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, 
that must have happened in a dream that you told oh, me that. And wow. I just switched it up. I feel like yeah. I've had little things, like not in that particular scenario, yeah. but I think like a friend telling me something about like, oh, I got a dog. And it's like, how's your dog doing? What are you talking about? I don't have oh, a dog. Yeah. I feel like yes, but so slightly I can't even remember. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Or it's just been something that before even say anything, I had sorted out in my head that, oh, wait, that's not reality. Yeah. That was just. I think that's typically perception. what happens. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is strange. 